Today's screencast is on civil rights movement and other groups. If we were in class, you would have been assigned one of the five readings. And as a group, you would have responded to a series of questions after conducting a quick 45 second summary presentation to your group of five. So these are some of the questions. Question two. Question three. four, and five. One of the things uh, as far as the historical analysis goes is that the black civil rights movement, especially in the early 60s, starts to inspire other groups. By the time you get to the late 60s, you start to see some other groups demanding certain changes to their circumstances as well, and in some cases using some of the similar uh, approaches to the black civil rights movement, whether we're talking about sip-ins, whether we're talking about fish-ins, uh, the the Gray uh, Panthers taking a little bit of the Black Panther Party and so on. 1964, Lyndon Johnson Civil Rights Act of uh, 1964. And here he outlaws discrimination. Some of the language, here you see the tension between the state and federal government where he looks at uh, elections and uh, tries to outlaw the literacy tests and special qualifications from states. And here he talks about all persons shall be entitled to the full and equal enjoyment of goods and services, and so on. What are the things in the readings that you looked at have in common is that all these oppressed groups that were selected for this class seem to have this belief that education is going to change their circumstances. Here we have the Black Panther Party, the Indians of Alcatraz, and we have the Brown Berets in this particular uh, language. So this is a text from you know certain documents that those groups have come up with. And we look at the Mexican Americans and remember that the Mexican group was encouraged to come here during the Bracero program of World War II. And you start to see a question about whether or not uh, education is equal for this particular um, group. So let's take a look at this documentary clip here. Severely punished Mexican-American students for speaking Spanish in the classroom. Keep in mind that the Spanish language for many Mexicans is almost a characteristic of being Mexican. It's a defining characteristic, not an incidental characteristic. Young children were taught that the culture of their community, of their parents, was really a hindrance to success. If a child learned these kinds of things, he began then to look upon his cultural background, upon his parents, upon his community in a negative way. So we just saw that the school was bad. The Brown Beret organization became involved as we were fearful that the police, you know, were going to come down heavy. Uh, on these kids and we wanted to protect them as much as possible. So the Brown Berets represented the security. The Brown Berets were a paramilitary group. They advocated... The question there is whether or not, um, you know, the school district has an obligation to teach uh, classes in English or in Spanish. And uh, I'll let you figure out where you stand on that particular debate. All we need to know for this section, though, is that the... Uh, Mexican Americans felt that it was, you know, the school's responsibility to make changes. And um, here we see some of Cesar Chavez, some of his work where he starts to advocate for the farmers. Here he is right there. And I think there's a connection where you start to see some of these uh, Mexican laborers being tracked into, you know, low-skilled jobs with low wages. So there would be possibly a connection between education that the Brown Berets are advocating for to try to change their circumstances. The Native Americans, uh, one of the readings was uh, by Richard Oakes. And he says here that the system never offered anything that had to do with being Indian. So here we have another group that's suggesting that it's the government's obligation to you know, make a adjustment now, which is a question, does the minority have to, uh, you know, a, a change or does the majority have to change? So here's a quick clip from the protest, which is apparently not available there. Um, but, uh, 
You uh, describe for me again what it is you hope to build out here on Alcatraz. Build a nation. We hope to build an example that uh, our a, a mecca, a, sc a school where other Indians can come to and just learn. Here's Mr. Harmon. Hi. Mr. Harmon. Hi. So it brings up the same question with regard to education and who has to adjust the minority, the majority. Uh, women. Let's take a look at some women. And I'm primarily concerned with the Miss America beauty pageant. Um, keep in mind, you start to see different groups emerging. Um, here we're looking at the National Organization for Women and how you have two branches within the older in comparison to the younger and so on, which is something that pretty much addresses a lot of uh, civil rights groups, especially in the 1960s. Um, the feminist mystique, you know, challenging the thought process that all a woman is uh, present for in the family is to be the housewife, and that's all she is there for within the family unit. Which brings up some other questions with regard to um, equal access uh, within the society. And one of the things that the New York Radical Women protested was Miss America in 1968. And thanks to the research of Tony and Revelon, you can get this standard quality model wherever you... So that protest was in Atlantic City, New Jersey. They wanted a permit to burn bras, which was denied. And that was their protest. And here you see this particular image looking at the sexual portrayal of women. A question to think about if you are a female right there, uh, which is a question that I think any group can ask, uh, which really is an identity question. You know, is there something to it? Um, do other individuals, their choices, kind of put the group back and think about groups, whether or not that applies to different religious groups or groups just in general? Uh, we've looked at the uh, gay rights. We know that Executive Order 10450 banned homosexuals from federal employment. And we know that the Mattachine Society had been working since the 50s. And by the time you get to the late 60s, you start to see Stonewall riots. Frank Kameni, Stonewall riots, Mattachine Society. And again, some of the items that we have addressed in prior classes. The issue of entrapment, which was something that we have addressed before, which was another Madison Society issue. And again, most of this all falls during Johnson's presidency. Um, he was trying to create a great society, and the civil rights movement is really taking the toll on his presidency, as well as the Vietnam War, and that is something that we will be transitioning to in a later class.